Hi there, on today's Top Tip Tuesday, we're going to be simulating some water beading using Nexus fluids. We'll be using the surface tension settings to get those really nice beading droplets of water. It's a very quick technique to set up, but gives some really nice realistic results. So let's get started. In our scene, we have this very basic fluid simulation set up. Let's have a look first of all at what we've got here. Our XP emitter in the object tab is set to rectangle emission shape with these dimensions. And in the emission tab, we've got it set to rate 100 particles per frame, zero speed, 0.7 radius. We've got a default NX fluids and a default NX gravity in the scene giving us this. The gravity is obviously pulling the particles down and we have an NX kill which is this orange bounding box and it just means the particles are killed if they stray outside of it so we can see them dying at the bottom. So what we want to do is create some beading um, and we use surface tension to create this kind of beading look with water. So to do that we're going to go to our default NX fluids and we're going to change the solver from PBD to SBH which has got really good surface tension controls. Now surface tension is an effect that requires a very accurate simulation to work well so we're going to increase the sub steps to say 8 which is going to increase accuracy which will make this work better and then we're going to move down and we're going to put our surface tension, look, let's just whack it right on full and leave everything else default. And what you're going to see is that at the top of our sim, we're not going to get much of a change. But as our particles, look, hit our collision geometry, they start to bead. So we're getting a look that's looking a little bit better. But the problem is, is we're not getting any beading at the top. And that's because the particles never have a chance to interact with each other because they're being born pulled down straight away by the gravity and they're only really slowing down and allowing the surface tension beading to take place once they're on this uh, collision geometry. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to stop the movement to give them a chance to bead before they get pulled down and we're going to do that by going to our NX gravity, we're going to go to the mapping tab and we're going to map the strength of the gravity to, we can actually do the age of the particle a few different ways but we'll use age so we're going to bring in an age layer and we want to map the yes gravity strength to the age of the particle and what this is saying is on the default um, settings is that the range min is set to zero frames and 30 frames so that range is along this x-axis zero frames old up to 30 frames old and the gravity strength is mapped to the y-axis so this is saying at zero frames old the particles have zero gravity strength and as they get older towards 30 frames old they then have full gravity strength so we want um, them to have no gravity strength for quite a long time so let's change the range min to say 59 and the max to say 65 so this is now saying at frame 59 and before the particles will have no gravity strength and then their strength will gradually get stronger until they're 65 frames old. Let's have a look at the effect. So yes, look, they're not moving. They're starting to bead and then they drop down. So we've given them a chance to start beading before the gravity takes hold. And now we've got water droplets in the air. Brilliant. Now, we don't need the gravity to actually be as strong. Let's go back to the object tab of our gravity. It's on the default. Let's like half it, maybe 450. Let's have a look and see if we start getting some nice water drops. Yeah, so we're getting some really cool drops coming down here and then beading on our surface. So that's looking excellent. I like that look, uh, look a lot. And if you want them to not be moving around as quickly on our surface, we can go to our cube, which is our collision geometry. Let's go to the collider tag. And look, we've got these settings for bounce, friction and scatter. If we increase the friction, it'll just arrest that movement somewhere. And they'll kind of almost stick to the surface and only be dislodged if another droplet then hits them. So you can mess around with that friction amount until you've got a look that you like. That's looking good. So to get um, a look here, all we need to do is mesh these uh, particles, which will create geometry for our droplets. So if we go to my generators folder, you can see I've actually got uh, open VDB mesher already set up here. Let's switch it on. Go to the general tab. 
and we have the emitter dragged in, so it's meshing the emitter. We have the voxel size set to 1, and the only other change we've made is the point radius has been put to 3. And then if we go to our filters, there is one curvature filter with iterations set to 4, and that's giving us this mesh. If we just uh, dolly in a bit and hit NQ, you can see that there is our um, open VDB mesh. So now if we do a quick render, let's go into our camera. We've got a couple of very basic materials on here and a cycles environment. Let's go to the cycles real time preview and give this a render. And there we can see really quickly we've got this really nice water droplet scene with them falling from the sky, splashing on our um, geometry and really convincing look very quick and easy to set up.